It's always nice to see positive improvements right off the bat from a video game that's at least an update to the other one. So, the Resident Evil 3 DLC for Resident Evil 2, it's supposedly a standalone, but it also combines with the previous game if you purchase it that way. Um, it has different graphical options that are a little better. Some are a little worse, though. Uh, for example, subsurface scattering, which is supposed to make the character model skin look better. I don't see a difference and I can tell graphics pretty well. I don't have bad eyes. There doesn't seem to be anything happening. Um, there's also a shadow cache, which supposedly caches the shadows, and the vaguest thing that I got off of Reddit, which is the only website I could look up for it, was that it created a sort of better shadows effect, but I assume that's pre-baking the shadows, which only is good if you have a graphics card that has a struggling time rendering shadows, which I don't think mine really does live. So, they said it would also create, like, catches in between load screens if you didn't have enough virtual RAM. And I don't like to rely on virtual RAM, especially for games with engines that are a little bit older like this, because it never works properly. You'd have to be running an Unreal Engine 4 or five game for that type of thing to make sense and I've never seen many games even use those type of engines so until that happens I just don't even think that it's really relevant there's also um, let's see here I'm just gonna look through them really quick so just kinda talk you through it because I don't really think there's a usage for half of these settings um, shadow quality if you set it to max it's nearly indivisible from high which takes off a whole maybe gigabyte or more worth of uh rendering space for your your uh, ram and it just doesn't seem to do enough for it to be worth anything mesh quality is sort of the same but it's a little bit more important um the texture filtering quality when you go to uh i'm doing this all for ati so nvidia need not apply NISO, when I go to 16 plus, it doesn't. It seems to be almost creating too much noise, as if the game engine's texture or geometric files aren't actually high quality enough to really handle it at that point. 8x looks about the same, and a little less noisy on certain surfaces. Um, the texture quality. They just claim that if you keep going up and adding gigabytes at a time, then you'll get better texture quality magically. But as we all know, the textures are the same quality that they were rendered at at their maximum. They're not going to get better magically. So I don't see why I should up that at all. Especially in this version, which doesn't really seem to do anything. It just seems to increase it as if it's magically increasing your textures improvements. With each gigabyte you're adding on, and that seems fictional, so I don't believe that. Um, they have a frame rate of only 60 proving my point in this game that's the max that you can set it at even though they recognize your refresh rate and will probably try to sync to the maximum uh, frame rate that the game engine allows it doesn't go actually the game engine itself above 60 frames a second so just so you're aware that's why I'm saying it's old because it doesn't even actually support 144 truly Let's see here. The one other thing I was going to bring up would be um, motion blur. Never turn that on. And um, depth of field doesn't seem to have an impact on my computer. So if you're running ATI, it's just apparently a blurring effect. Maybe that's that way on NVIDIA too, but I assume not because NVIDIA has issues rendering base analog effects. Um, oh yeah, and there's also Fidelity FX CAS plus upscaling. I never approve of upscaling, and so I'm not going to turn that on, and I don't really care what it is, but I'm sure it doesn't really benefit. There's a lot of useless options here, and I don't quite understand who they would really uh, be useful for. That's all.